Hello, amazing ladies, and welcome to the Her Story podcast. I am your host, Kylie King, and I am so excited to be joined by the amazing Ash Sundaram from Krivi Creations. She is based in Sydney, and she's also an Alibi Award winner for the Handmade Heroine category. So thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Kylie. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. And yes, it was really a wonderful event. Um, Had a really, really amazing time with like-minded individuals there. Thank you for that. And hello to everyone who's tuned in to watch this. So let's get started. For those that are watching or listening, um, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your business? What does Krivi Creations do? Okay, so a bit about myself. I am a self-taught mandala artist and also I recently certified myself as a sole purpose coach. Um, I've tried, um, you know, venturing into the culinary world from about 2011 to 2017. I have my own recipe blog called Saupurnika's Kitchen and Saupurnika is my pen name. So it has about 350 recipes and uh, my YouTube channel has about 125 recipe videos. I've also diversified with the culinary world as a culinary writer. I have written a number of articles and I've also penned my own cookbook in my mother tongue, Tamil. So that was until 2017. I've tried a bit of uh, nail art from 2017 to 2019, self-taught. It was just a hobby. It didn't kick off as like a small business. And I've also tried my hand at jewelry making in uh, uh, during the COVID lockdown times. So uh, that was the starting point of Krivi Creation. So I had, I first started with the jewelries and started it with Krivi Creations, but it didn't last long or it didn't probably give so much of, uh, uh, you know, logs of wood for me to fire on. Uh, so that sort of raised and died down. And in July, 2020, I had a plant of Shaiti's episode and that made me start uh, doing mandalas. I just got a few paints and I just got started. So Tas was born Krivi Creations, um, which is now rebranded into the Mandala Mark. That's my Insta handle. What a beautiful journey. And I like that you've tried different things and then you've come to, to just mandalas now. And what do you love about them? Like what has made you stick with this? Ah, that is something which I have churned for myself a lot. Um, so what I love about creating mandalas is just the process itself. Just how I sit and create the mandalas itself is very satisfying for me. And then the next, uh, uh, you know, the perk being looking at the beautifully created mandalas. So um, picture this, the diffuser is on and it's like, you know, giving you that fragrance around the room. And uh, my sound bar would be chanting some soft, gentle chants. It could be ohm, it could be anything else, depending on my mood. And uh, it's just the colors, the canvas, and myself. It could be for an hour, it could be for two hours, it could be for three hours. As long as I have my creative flow, it depends. There's no rhyme, logic, reason. I can't like sit from 12 to 2 every day creating mandala. So there needs to be that pull. There needs to be that, you know, something from within, which is, you know, gravitating me towards that. So um, I enjoy this whole intuitive process. I pick the colors intuitively and I have the base material, which I've done geometry on. So, um, and it's not like, okay, I paint the clouds, I paint the sun, I paint the mountains. It's not like that. I don't know what is going to turn up as much as there's no clue for somebody who's watching me. I don't have any clue either. So this whole, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the channeled work, is what makes it really, really, really interesting. And I have uh, sort of consciously created a ritual around it. And it becomes like my avenue of um, getting a lot of answers, churning a lot of information. Like we all have parked questions around us. So which we are like, okay, let it hang in there. Let me, I will figure it out when I have to figure it out. So there are a lot of answers which come up for those parked questions. Um, and because it's a channeled work, there's so much of insights and reflections which turn up. So oftentimes what happens is after I finish a mandala or that night when before I hit the bed, I sit and like, you know, write down those small bits and pieces which occurred during my mandala sessions. And um, if I have the push from within, I elaborate on them. And, um, and, and that is a sort of inner growth, inner work, which I do. So this whole... Thing. yeah that's why it's like you know still alive with me and uh, I've still not gotten bored of 
creating more, you know, as I, I've not gotten bored of this as an art form because it is sort of intertwined in my life in a way which I don't think is, you know, separable, at least for the moment. Fair enough. That sounds beautiful. So as you're creating them, you're also doing the inner work around them and, and having that inner work moment, which is just beautiful. Um, for anyone that might not know what a mandala is or what they look like, do you happen to have one that you'd be happy to share? Yeah, I do you're have two versions of them. One is a digital version, which I'm wearing, the mandala t-shirts, beautiful. which I create. And this is actually mandala. This is wow. an evil eye mandala, which I've created. That's gorgeous. How long, do you mind if I ask, how long did that take you? Uh, this one. So if I have to say end to end, the geometry itself takes a longer time because I need to mark sometimes even every five degrees on the grids for the grids. Yeah. So it, it takes like, you know, I need to put the concentric circles and I need to have mark like every five degrees, sometimes every 2.5 degrees so that I have good grids. So the grids basically are like the skeleton of our body. Mm -hmm. So the whole body sits on the skeleton. So the grids are as important as the final outcome. Um, probably about maybe 20 hours, something like that. I would say mm -hmm. end to end prepping the canvas and then doing the geometry. Geometry also takes quite a bit of time. And I call this uh, the heart of a mandala. So that's my way of putting it out. And when I conduct mandala workshops as well, I tell people that spend more time on the geometry because if you get even one centimeter wrong that's going to impact the whole outcome of the mandala so you know the, it, there are white dots all over the mandala there so even if i miss one millimeter this side that side marking the center this would there would be space beyond the dot and there wouldn't be space for this dot so it's that critical and it has to be that accurate wow so you just mentioned before that you do mandala workshops so people can come and learn from the expert, the mandala month, they can come and learn from you. Can they also purchase, like, is that one you've shown, is that for sale? Do you do custom work? How does it, how does it work? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So um, all of which you asked happens for me through Instagram. I don't have like a Shopify or anything like that, but uh, till date, it's been three years since I'm doing mandala. So people just, uh, send me a ping, a DM via Instagram, and then uh, they start chatting about, okay, I'm building a new house. I'm going to move into this new house. I want a mandala at this place. Can you suggest some color schemes and all of that? So, and then I take up their phone number. I just give them a call and then follow it up, ask them what color schemes they would want, what size. I take as much details from them, send them a proper quotation, uh, which reflects all the pointers which we discussed. Mm -hmm. And once they are happy with the price and the size and the colors, then they go ahead with the ordering and then they just let me know, okay, it's a thumbs up. I take a bit of a token advance. I start my work and then deliver the mandala. So everything happens only from through Instagram. And uh, yeah, these pieces are for sale. I do have, um, there's something called guides in Instagram. So I have a guide where I have all my pieces with the prices for sale, whichever I have in my studio, uh, which is there. But mostly, um, this is one of the pieces which I did for myself without an order. But mostly it's like, okay, there's something called a divine timing. So as I finish one order and I have a breather, I will get the next. As <laughs> I finish that, then I will. So it's, I, I see it as the timing of the universe, you know, giving me the work at the allocated times so that's how it has been well that's beautiful because they know it's such a creation and that so much you know energy and inspiration and all of that happens during it so it's good they're not like here's five like it's good they're giving you that space to go okay we've done this one now is time for the next creation yes and also sometimes the, it, it, there, there has been times where I've got like four clients at once asking me for things. So what I do is based on who contacted me first, the first in first out, I just, uh, you know, say one, two, three, four, and then I mark this time, okay, this much time for this size of a mandala, this much time for that. So I upfront tell them realistically, I have three orders ahead of yours. So you're looking at somewhere, you know, whatever date I fix up for them, whatever, according to my calculation. Because again, like I said, this is like an artistic process where I can't, think like okay tomorrow three hours the day after three hours the day after three hours and then I'm done because and and once I remember I told the client that it's going to take even a week longer because I'm not feeling the urge to do that so and I don't want to just 
do something with the paints and give it off to you. I want to be able to flow creatively so that it turns out beautifully. And then she was very sweet and very understanding. She said, please don't. I'm so glad that you came and told this to me rather than finishing and giving something off to me. Like you rightly said, they have a lot of my, every piece has a part of my soul, which is so beautiful, I think. And I want to be able to do justice. Like I said, it's not about the client and their artwork. It is more about how I create my pieces. I think that's what's made people you know, to come to me rather than to anybody else as well. The way I create them, I put in so much of my uh, heart and soul into what I do, which reflects in the outcome, I feel. Beautiful. That sounds beautiful. So with your business, what has been your biggest challenge so far? Okay. Biggest challenge in one word is solopreneurship. <laughs> So the solopreneurship has been the biggest challenge because I'm this person who procures the raw materials, uh, liaises with the suppliers, liaising with the clients, and uh, this cute male woman who takes everything to the, uh, so if it's from small to bigger orders, and then packaging person. So all, and then the most important I'm forgetting now is the Instagram reel creator. Because I try and shoot you know, all these little bits and pieces behind the scenes, how I package an order. So recently I had sent about 30 incense mandala holders for uh, a client in Melbourne. She had uh, her housewarming ceremony and she wanted to give these as return gifts. She was very particular that she wanted something from me for return gifts. So then how I package everything, how I, you know, align all of them compact and then send it off and all of that. Um, so doing whatever I'm doing is one side of it. And doing the reels, cutting the reels and editing the reels and posting them is totally, totally different job. And it's quite time consuming. So that's one thing with respect to Mandala. Uh, like I said, I've certified myself as this sole purpose coach very recently. So the challenges there, I feel, is putting myself out there, uh, communicating my value as a coach communicating my unique value proposition. So I have this beautiful certificate which says certified Dharma coach, the certified sole purpose coach. But then there's nobody who's going to knock at my door and say, hey, wow, you, you're this coach. I would want to work with you. Or there's nobody going to queue up outside my house saying, oh, we would love to work with you. So there's so much of time, effort and energy which goes into marketing myself, putting myself out there um saying that okay this is what i offer if you whether you want to do one on one coaching or whether you uh you know want to empower yourself with these workshops uh, there's a significant amount of time and energy which goes in constructing those messages you know providing those right links and you must be knowing with your podcast and all of that it's a big task in itself putting ourselves out in the social media world and um grabbing people's attention which is now it's it's I believe it's told that it's our attention span is less than a goldfish. Yes, actually, we were just talking about this in in another episode because Alibi is actually my side hustle, and I have a coaching and hypnotherapy business. So it is mm. very much you having to put yourself out there and going, "This is me, and I'm really good at what I do, and I can really help you." And then yes. bringing them along to do that. So it is, yes. and then the different, like you mentioned, then there's you know if you're marketing on Instagram or podcasts or wherever there's. And, you know, you are it at the moment <laughs> to try and remember to do all those things. And um, for me, one more challenge I feel is building like a cohesive uh, story for my brand. So it was Krivi Creations and then I rebranded to the Mandala Ma mm -hmm. because I had, uh, uh, I wanted to integrate my uh, coaching and Mandala as one thing. So building a story, a cohesive story around it. If you notice on my Instagram, I call this as aqua content. So aqua is the color of my uh, logo, my brand, Soul Coach. So I do something called the daily reminders. So everybody knows everything. But these daily reminders, even friends, I've had them mention to me that when that turns up on my feed, I'm like, yes. So the last one I put was thinking, wishing, planning versus taking that one actionable step. So that outweighs all of this. So everybody knows everything, but then... When somebody is contemplating on something and then this shows up on the feed, then they are like, okay, I'm going to take that step. That's a big victory for me as well. Mm -hmm. Although I don't know they've done that, although they 
don't, uh, you know, uh, they are just one of my followers. They don't come up to me and say that or whatever it is. That's something which I am, uh, uh, I mean, I'm impacting the society or uh, the people around in a very positive way. I feel that itself is a victory for me. That itself is um, soul satiating, if I have to put it that way. So that, so if you notice, it'll be like one aqua content and one mandala content. So my, uh, you know, Insta handle would, I, I, I planned it aesthetically that way, that it has to be like one uh, daily reminders and one mandala, one day. So it'll have like a checkered layout feel. Oh, nice. Nice. That's good for anyone listening who's like, how do I make a really nice uh, Instagram page? Go and check out uh, at the Mandala Monk. Is that what your Instagram handle yes, is? The yep. Mandala Monk. At the yes. Mandala. Go and check it out. <laughs> and now it'll make more sense to you when you're like, why is Ash doing that? Because that's what she's doing. She wants to create the victory, feel victory about people going and doing these changes, whether she knows about it or not, which is amazing. So what would you say has been your biggest achievement so far? Mm. my biggest achievement or my strength I think would be uh, my ability to have like a unified focus mm. and also my ability to diversify into whatever I take up as say if I have to take up mandala as an example with an art form I've diversified mandala into uh, photo frames, mandala mirrors, mandala clocks, mandala incense holders, uh, mandala boomerangs. So, and and I have also got something called message mandala. So there's like a message in the middle, say good vibes, and then there's mandala around it. So it can be like a gentle reminder on the desk, or it can just be a feel good aesthetic factor, however one wants to do it. So that's one way. And I digitally diversified to mandala t-shirts, mandala stubby holders, mandala mugs, uh, mandala mouse pads so it's like so the, the the my my ability to be able to diversify whatever i'm into so if it's instagram if there's a content i'm i i am able to market that content in various ways to get the most out of that one content or one video so and my determination and consistency this is what i've heard from a number of people around me who've kept telling me so then now I have started believing, okay, possibly that's my strength. If so many people are telling me that, then I couldn't be wrong. So um, when I have a unified focus, I am that go-getter and I go uh, into the depths of whatever I want to do, drill into the depths and make it happen, irrespective of what reception that is going to get. It's more like I put myself out there for myself, my happiness and my satiation. And then, yeah. That's a really important tip too. You're going out there to, you know, do what's best for you. That's what people should be doing. They should be doing what's best for them instead of worrying about the rest follows. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Is there any advice that you wish you were given when you started your business? Mm, advice. So uh, I think a lot of these answers would probably come from my inner work. I would, uh, I would think so. Advices are really good. They can serve as a guidance. But uh, for me, I feel life itself or the journey itself is a very profound teacher, which sort of teaches me um, uh, the journey unfolds, unveils at the right times when we are able to take that lesson. So I go with that. I just trust the process. Like, I mean, these words have been, uh, should I say, abused a lot or, you know, cliche a lot, whatever, yeah. but that is the truth. And experientially trusting the process, surrendering to whatever is flowing, because that's how I have been able to do this. Like, otherwise I never would thought I would be an artist. Like uh, until 2020, I never even thought I was creative. If somebody asked me, I would say, yes, I can recreate this piece. So if somebody gave me a drawing and then they say, can you recreate this? Yes, I can recreate that. But if you ask me to create something from my head, I, I, that was the story I was telling myself that I'm not creative. So um, just trusting the process, surrendering. And then I feel we are all on our unique journey and path. And we will uncover things when the right time, uh, at the right times. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Good. 
good job on that inner work and that mandalas, right? <laughs> Some great Thank advice you. comes through. So if you would, if you're willing to share, what is the ultimate goal for your business? Whether it's the mandalas or the female in power, oh, sorry, the sole purpose, what is your ultimate goal? Yeah, so now I see myself as uh, probably a year back or two years back, I would have seen myself only as this mandala artist. Um, now I see myself as this sole purpose coach and mandala artist. And uh, to be very honest with you, I did this certification just to grow for myself, for my growth, personal growth. Never ever was I even thinking that I would become a, a coach who will be that guiding light for people. Mm -hmm. So I never had this, those intentions, like part of my inner work, I thought I'm just going to do this course just to have uh, for my own enrichment. That's all it was when I registered and even through uh, halfway of the course, that was how it all panned out. But as we were having like mock sessions and I was uh, coaching these fellow cohorts, I kept hearing a lot saying that, oh, you are doing this, you are doing that. Then I'm like, okay, probably I shouldn't. Uh, it, it is, it would be, um, I'm not doing justice if I'm, you know, not venturing into that side of it to see what I can do. So um, the goal for myself and my business, if in 2019, somebody had told me that I would be this mandala artist, I would have market stalls, I would be interviewed, I would be garnering uh, recognition and awards, and I would be the sole purpose coach conducting women empowerment workshops, it would have been really hard for me to believe. Mm -hmm. You were like, what? I would do this. But those, these unexpected rich experiences, which I've had ever since I started doing the mandalas for the last three years till date, including the recent Handmade Heroine Award, which is like, um, it, it is like a reassurance that, okay, yes, you're on the right path. Yes, keep going. It's, it's an encouragement. It's a support. It, it can be called anything. So including that, I have um, the, the profound lesson I see here is not to fixate myself in a predetermined destination rather than that, savoring the whole journey, the bumpy roads, the flat roads, everything which has taken me this far. So that has been my, uh, you know, uh, so moving forward, the goal for my business, if I have to say, would be. Uh, sharing the transformative power of art and coaching for personal growth with others who are on their respective unique journeys. Beautiful. That's that's an amazing goal. And of course, the journey on the way, but it's beautiful because that is happening during your, your process and your, your journey travel. So that's awesome. So as the Mandala Monk, and also a sole purpose coach, if you could share one tip, like one little thing for the listeners to then, you know, come and stalk you, like a taste tester, what would that tip be? Uh, to come and stalk me. Come and, mm, mm, mm. Um, I always believe in just being authentic. That's my one thing. So just be authentic because authenticity is what connects you to people's heart. And authenticity is what drives you into people's heart. And like everybody has a story. And when you're vulnerable, authentic, you're real, you're just the raw, no pretense, no, no facades and all of that, that really touches people and people start following you. People start, you know, uh, for anybody, for anybody in um, as a person, for any small business, so be just authentic, be true to your niche, be true to what you're doing. And then the output will automatically reflect, start reflecting that. Beautiful. And it's so important because everyone tries to generally fit into a box or try and show up in different ways for what they think other people are after. Mm -hmm. But yes. it is just showing up as yourself because people want to get to know you and people want to understand. And it's the same with business too. They want to know who's behind the business and what makes that person tick. So that's such a beautiful tip. Oh, thanks. So is there, how do people stalk you? Where do we find you to check out your beautiful art and to, to learn more? I get your daily reminders. Yes. So the Mandala Monk on Instagram is the best place to stop me to get my content. Um, yes, I just post daily reminders and also I post a lot of whether you want to learn mandala, I post something called real tutorials where 
I show how specific designs I make up close. In that way, if somebody is wanting to learn from those, they can do that. Or at the very least, these uh, reel making videos, reel making tutorials are so satisfying to watch. Just unwind at the end of the day. Just watch it at the end of the day. So the Mandala Monk on Instagram and the soulcoach.com.au. I've got that linked in the Instagram. So Instagram would be the go-to place. It has all the links. It has everything about me. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your business journey and then sharing the amazing work you're doing and the tip, which I absolutely love about being authentic. So thank you. Thank you so, so much. I really, truly, truly grateful uh, for our paths crossing and also for you having me on your podcast. Thank you so much. Anytime. I hope to have you back again. Oh, thanks. Thanks.